So, uh, hello, uh, today we'll be talking about knowledge production in archaeology, specifically how archaeological and conservation practices create final product, an interpretation about the past through the visual representation of the site itself. So, uh, what I'm doing today is not giving definite answers, so as William, I'm giving you a lot of questions, unfortunately, and problems and dilemmas that I have encountered during my research, so I hope you'll join me on my journey. Uh, archaeologic, archaeological sites are primarily perceived as research arenas, but in current state of art in archaeology, doing excavation is much more than that. A big number of reflexive analysis on how excavating really works open a completely new field of understanding of process of knowledge production about the past. As argued about the Matt Edgeworth, among many, the excavation is where archaeologists comes into direct physical contact with unfolding material evidence that has power to question and change our ideas about the past and how we perceive it in the present during the excavation itself. As discipline, archaeology is in the heart of that interplay between those two worlds, and since it produces knowledge about the past without, with the authority, as I agree on that, that none other discipline has. Conservation is a fellow companion on that path. Um, I found, I think, two years ago, this uh, representation for archaeological interpretive chains, which starts with discovery and ends, ends with commodification, adjusting the archaeological context and site to the presentation needs. As, and as Barbara Bender puts it, the way in which archaeological site and archaeological landscape is appropriated, concurred and exploited, open the space for a different understanding of the landscape depending on the angle of the view. Archaeological sites, uh, places and landscape become created images, so vis visual representations of certain narratives. This is the example, not of Drenovat site, but the Mesolithic site of Lepanskivir, which has gone through that changes from the discovery to the presentation itself. So this is just some quick orientation. Let's jump to the problem from the start. So the case study is archaeological site that is called Slatina Turkish Fontaine near Neolithic site, near, near village, uh, village Drenovac, but I will call, call it for the purpose of this presentation Drenovac because it's the commonly used uh, name among different group of users. It is located in the central part of Serbia. And uh, this is the project of archaeological research started in 2002 by the museum, local museum of Parac and a local museum of Jagunina. Those are the two small museums. Regional museums, of course, Archaeological Institute from Belgrade. Because of the need for systematization of extensive archaeological material from the research of Neolithic settlements in the area of the center of Pomoravlje, that is that area, region over the past two years. The project itself is founded by the Ministry of Culture and by the Ministry of Science, Science and, Ed and Education as well. Um, so this is the picture, like just a brief history of uh, research. It started so 14 years ago, but for from 2004, under the super supervision of Archaeological Institute in Belgrade, the archaeological research is conducted and, the, and they are in charge from then. From then, um, work has mainly been focused on protection and revision research, uh, as they put it, on important settlements you know, that were found in, the, uh, in and around uh, Slatina site. So these are uh, uh, ge uh, these are air photographs and geophysics of the whole terrain. As it, and as you can see, this is the highway, and these are the possible findings and settlements, settlements both left and uh, right on the, on the highway. Current uh, current site is located on the uh, right side of the highway. And uh, settlement itself represents, uh, appears on the area more than 60 uh, hectares, and archaeological cultural area is about m uh, seven meters thick. The settlement existed around from uh, 6,000 to 4,000 BP. 
Uh, about 100 Neolithic settlements are recorded in the area uh, of the center of Pomerale. So based on the current research, this zone, get, zone can be consi considered as one of the primary centers of Neolithization of the Central Balkans. So the importance for the research is great. Uh, site has several uh, had several transformation phases. You from the open site excavation, as you saw from the previous slides, to the clear physical demarcation of the area of interest. So this is before at one phase of transformation, and this is the current state of the site itself. Um, current excavation zone is divided into th uh, three squares. Uh, square 19, This that is the first part, I don't know, is it, is it okay, I see it very well here, but I don't know for you, because of the light and the contrast. Uh, square 25, 21 is are uh, those two structures, and square 22 is the last one. Uh, but, uh, and what is found there are, are is inter interpreted as houses, but not just regular houses, those, those are houses which, which had two floors. As part of protection and security measures, site management has built a shelter, which you can see with PVC membrane, and the aim is to make permanent presentation that will at least look something like <coughs> this. So, uh, what are the specifics of having two storehouses? What does it mean uh, in the methodological and practical sense? When archaeologists face with, the, with what appears to be second floor, this is the state of the house the first floor, the ground floor of the house, and this is how houses look when they are found, what is interpreted as, as the second floor. So when archaeologists face with the, what appears to be second floor in order to understand what, uh, what is the situation as a whole, that is the house as a whole, they have to peel down the upper layer, which is in a way a specific discovery uh, by itself. So here comes the first dilemma. Do we take, take off that upper layer or not? and what is waiting underneath. Is it worth of um, saving it or uh, will you find, find nothing? Because that's what happened with one of the houses. They peeled off down the first layer, the layer of the second floor, which is nothing unusual for archaeology. Of course, we are always going down and down. But uh, when they found nothing on the first floor, they were thinking, OK, maybe we shouldn't have done that because the second floor is the discovery for itself. So that's the first dilemma. Then uh, again, if top player remains, in which way should be preserved or presented? Is it going to stay like permanently or is it just temporary decision? And all these questions ha have equally consequences for archaeology, but also for conservation itself. Since the discovery of what is interpreted as second floor in Neolithics is huge deal. So the way we handle that process of ex ex excavation will reflect the final image of the past. And uh, as I already mentioned, um, research on this site from the start has been followed with the conservation activities, which is must, I must emphasize a really good thing in Serbia, because that is something that doesn't happen a lot. On the Renovat site, conservation is incorporated in two ways, uh, curative or remedial conservation of movable finds in the facilities in village Drenovac where archaeological bases, and later in conservation studios in Belgrade museums and in the central institutes. Uh, there is also conservation of, of institute structures and in situ fi findings. And finally, from 2015, preventive conservation research has been introduced into the project. But before I continue with the case study, I have to make a just quick sketch about the history of the relationship be between archaeology and conservation in Serbia. The archaeology and conservation of the immovable cultural heritage in Serbia and former Yugoslavia began with the intense development after the Second World War. The first major venture was the research and dislocation of Mesolithic archaeological site, Lepinski Vir, due to the construction of them. And that is the, I think, um, maybe 10 years after the Abu Simbel dislocation happened. Uh, after that, the paths of archaeology and conservation in a certain, certain way became separated. Conservation of the immovable heritage was mainly reduced to the protection of antique and medieval sites. So nothing was done in the sense of conservation of pre prehistoric sites. Uh, while prehistoric sites, especially from the period of Paleolithic and Neolithic, simply have didn't develop, and today, today this field 
is uh, not up to date methodologically and theoretically uh, in the, within the Serbia conservation discourse. Uh, integration of conservation in archaeological research for those sites is simply rare and conservation is considered, is considered as something that ha happens after the excavation, somewhere there very uh, far away from the site in the museums or conservation studios. Uh, one of the reasons is lack of funding, so nobody wants to spend insufficient fi finances on conservation, which is in a way logical, but also uh, excavation holds that primacy, which leads either to the poor conservation, both off and on the site, as well as lack of properly educated archaeological conservators in this field. So this is me and my colleague pretending to do something on the site, because preventing conservation is always something that is vague and uh, really not, not, not easily understand and understandable when it comes to uh, archaeologists. The ongoing operation of this archaeological project uh, is mostly a result of the project environmental monitoring at archaeological site. The idea of this project originated from the recognized need to, stay, to take a systematic and comprehensive approach for the long-term preservation of archaeological sites. The overall objective of the bigger project is to, uh, to based on the surveys and acquired data, to develop a long-term management strategies for the sites, and the Drenovac is just one of them. Uh, one of the main concerns of our work is risk assessment for the site, and in that includes surveys, monitoring of different deterioration factors, uh, and estimating possible loss of value. Those surveys included monitoring and observation of existing practices that could improve or minimize set values on Drenovat's site. And uh, as the things are not complicated as they are, in most cases, at least in Serbia, prehistoric sites also have, uh, are lacking the vis vis visible structures, especially when we, we are talking in prehistoric and especially Neolithic sites. So, referencing Raymond Carl, whether in word of visualizing archaeology by reconstructive interpretations aim at creating a complete image for, for, from fragmentary records to increase academic and public, public understanding of the past. This filling of the gaps is ultimately a process of creatively imagining the whole and making it up by putting it to the image things we know where they were, they were without knowing exactly how they origina originally looked like. Ideally, what we fill into these gaps should be based on solid research, carefully considered what could have been there and how it probably looked like. But in practice, as often as not, we are required to make up these gap fillers as we go along. So, I try to organize my dilemmas and problems that I encountered in four categories. Uh, first one is material speaks for itself um, and talking about archaeological confessions on these conferences, so this is one but not mine. This is not exactly the quote but reconstruction of what has been said. And uh, So as you see it is clear that during excavation there is complex relationship, a specific body of knowledge that shapes our performance during media work on the site. This is the, uh, the sentence that one of the archaeologists said to me when we were talking about how they estimate the way of uh, at what level they should stop, what to do, when to stop and when to let conservator do the things and, and etc. Uh, as Edward states, meanings emerges from our most basic encounters with archaeological evidence which impart a direction and trajectory to research from the very outset relying on ap applied ideas and giving impetus to new intellectual currents. The conservation of, on the other hand, the conservation, uh, second uh, category is level of intervention. So the <coughs> conservation of earth and archaeolo archaeological remains in Serbia and globally is new and underdeveloped field. So uh, bearing this in mind, as well as the principle of minimal intervention, uh, intervention in conservation, the question arises which treatments are really necessary uh, at the site, both from the angle of restoration as well as readability, as well as due to potential contamination of future archaeological samples, such as archaeobotanical remains or other types of ecovax. The question is if you don't have controllable environment, which is the case of site of Drenovac, or process of excavation is still in progress, 
is there a reasonable, a reasonable argument about application of cons consolidants on C2 in, uh, in C2 structures? So, which has been done in order to make a good presentation. So they applied consolidants even though they are in the process of research. The third is also a level of intervention, but it's most, mostly connected to the application of restoration approaches. So I don't know, again, how much can you see because the differences in, in colors are very uh, small, but these are, uh, these are the tests that are conducted on the sites for the ground around the houses themselves. So again, are we preserving question, are we preserving the original state or are we putting back restored ceramics? And what is the message if we mix both approaches? And in uh, the process of creating secondary context, what are the rules and principles? I know that uh, maybe that's uh, things that is obvious, especially when we are talking about museum conservation and restoration, but when it comes to archaeological site itself, in, the, in this case it's not that obvious as well. So this is some intervention about the in-situ uh, fragmentary uh, in situ intervention around ceramics that is found. You see the gray area, which is not originally, which wasn't originally <coughs> there. And the last one is readability. Um, we know that a post hole did once contain a post, but whether that post at least uh, was above the ground, was it round or, or square, plain or highly decorated, is something that we don't know, at least not at the beginning. At best, we can make rough estimates, but usually those have wide mar mar uh, margin of error. So as you can see, uh, when we are talking about uh, facing the second floor, there are a lot of holes that emerges dur emerge during the excavation itself. As I've been explained, some of the holes are post holes and some of them are a result of conservation advice to clean them out so, because it can, so it can be properly, co properly conserved. When introducing uh, the uncertainty of how practically conservation activities on the site should be used, the result is, is at least worrying. Because from these interventions, some parts of the house that had different surface character characteristics looks like the houses had beams support on every inch. Uh, and at the end, uh, you have probably noticed that the site itself it has shelter. So uh, what about the prehistoric landscape? Based on, re uh, on research, this area still needs to be explored since the site itself covers a much bigger surface, left, left and second, left and right on the, uh, from the highway. In terms of reconstruct reconstructing prehistoric landscapes, this shelter fails to provide adequate framework for interpretation and presentation. Does it break that immediate connection to its uh, uh, environment? In order to co completely uh, comprise the situation, I'm re I repeated these two pictures from the beginning. And to, co to conclude, archaeological sites as places of human activity in the past, but also in the present, are constructed. In spite of their fragmentation, they represent a complex creation that, that depends on the legibility and authenticity of their structures and components how these structures are articulated spa uh, spatially and interpretively are key points in which it is necessary to achieve strategic but also scientifically valid values. Since a picture says more than, than a thousand words, we will impress a picture of the past on everyone's mind, which is not completely critically or methodologically processed. Lastly, do we have proper tool to assess the balance between conservation and presentation? In this presentation, I wanted to shed a light what happens when there is no clear understanding, understanding of role and capacity for conservation in archaeology, both good and bad. And when there is a pressure, professional and disciplinary, to produce heritage, heritage that is, in this case, progress-led practice. And at the end, finally, the intention of this presentation was not to point finger, fingers at someone because Drenovac uh, itself is a very complex and challenging site, both in terms of archaeology and conservation as well as methodologically and theoretically. How should we approach the two-floor houses? 
but I believe that great discoveries will be revealed in the future. Still, in the process of current research, there are some inconsistencies and dilemmas that, bearing in mind the state of archaeological conservation of prehistoric sites in Serbia, should be used as a model to res reassess existing approaches and to try to learn on these kind of examples. Yes.